That was Chris Christopherson and Roseanne Cash at Willie Nelson's 90th birthday party. And it's really the reason we're here. The actual party was in April 2023, but CBS aired it last December, giving about 5 million people a chance to see Chris Christopherson on TV for the first time since, gosh, I think it's been a decade. My math shows the 2014 Grammys as his last televised moment, and good golly, so much has changed, and it's not all bad for Chris. With this video, I hope to help you understand what Chris Christopherson has been through. There's a pretty shocking twist, and you'll end up feeling pretty good about what you see, but first, I need to begin with a little bit of background. If you're a longtime fan, Find time codes in the description section to jump over who he is and what he's contributed to country music. Please appreciate that there are new fans who are learning about Chris for the very first time. We're really going to count on them to bring Chris's music to the next generation of country music fans. Short version. There's a real good reason that his buddy Willie Nelson said this during his induction speech at the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now that Johnny and I have been uh, inducted, I want to give a plug for Waylon, who played with Buddy Holly and Chris, who sang so many hits, to be inducted to. He was of course referring to Waylon Jennings and Chris Christopherson, who along with Willie and Johnny Cash, formed the Highwaymen in the mid-80s. Thumbs up if you agree with Willie, and maybe even make a suggestion about who else from country music should go into the Rock Hall. Also, consider subscribing if you appreciate original analysis of country music news. And be sure to check out the Taste of Country store for some great merch that cherishes the legends, that's actually the best way to support this channel. Christopherson enjoyed a decent artist career and played some really memorable roles in film. Most notable was his Golden Globe Award winning role as John Norman Howard in the 1976 film, A Star Is Born. We're coming closer, lady. Musically, he's generally considered to be in the top tier of country songwriters, perhaps only second to Hank Williams, this is his most famous right. Help me make it through the night. A ton of people have cut that song. The same is true for me and Bobby McGee, but Janis Joplin's version is most famous there. For The Good Times by Ray Price and The Talker by Waylon Jennings are two more. Johnny Cash's Sunday Morning Coming Down earned him a CMA award. Well, I woke up Sunday morning with no way to hold my head that didn't hurt. He'd eventually be given Lifetime Achievement Awards at the ACMs, CMAs, and Grammys, hence the 2014 Grammy Awards performance. We put that together in 2016, which was about the time that everything we thought we knew about Chris's health pivoted. Chris will turn 88 in 2024, and as of 2021, he is officially retired. Still, he's made some public appearances over the last few years. Most notable are the yearly Country Music Hall of Fame medallion ceremonies. He helped induct Hank Williams Jr. in 2022, but he didn't speak and haven't been there that night. I kind of took that as a sign that he wasn't in a place where he could really wax poetic about someone's life and career. But it's a pretty dangerous leap to assume that his reticence and his unsteady stature during the Willie Nelson birthday celebration is a sign that something is wrong. I say this with total sensitivity. He's almost 90, and almost 90-year-olds have good days and bad days. Let me use Loretta Lynn as an example. Prior to her death, I witnessed moments where she seemed very unaware, but then also saw some really insightful interviews with her. I mean, you just don't know. When Chris announced his retirement in 2021, his team made it really clear that it had more to do with the COVID-19 pandemic and labeled it as a natural evolution. His manager even told Variety that, quote, he's really healthy and in good shape. Just two years earlier, he ripped through Bobby McGee at the Bridgestone Arena in Nashville. And yeah, that's Eric Church and Willie Nelson by his side. It was part of a different Willie Nelson tribute show. What everyone gets tripped up on was the announcement that Chris was battling Alzheimer's disease. Yeah, that kind of seems like a big deal, but it isn't because he wasn't battling Alzheimer's disease. Let me explain. From about 2009 to 2016, Chris was becoming increasingly forgetful. That's according to friends who spoke to Closer for a cover story titled, Chris Christopherson's Miracle Recovery from Alzheimer's Diagnosis. Doctors said it was either Alzheimer's or dementia brought on by being hit in the head so much playing football and boxing. We think of that as CTE today. His wife Lisa even talked to Rolling Stone about it all. In early 2016, 
A doctor thought to test him for Lyme disease, which can also cause neurological problems and memory loss issues. That test came back positive, and once he received treatment, quit taking medications for an illness that he didn't have, all of which had side effects. It was, quote, like Lazarus coming out of the grave and being born again. That was his friend Chris Gantry talking to Closer. Songwriters really do give the best quotes. Knowing all of this, do you see this moment with Roseanne Cash a little bit differently? I know I do. Physically, he's not the guy who ran across the stage during A Star is Born almost 50 years ago, but mentally, he's still very sharp. This story has a happy ending for now, and frankly, we'd love to see Willie get his Rock and Roll Hall of Fame wish. I'm Billy Dukes from Taste of Country. Thanks for watching, and thanks for subscribing.